Welcome to Living Destiny Church, where your destiny comes alive. You're about to listen to another life-changing, destiny-empowering message from Pastor Moses Asamoah Jr. Get ready to receive a divinely inspired revelation from the Word of God that will equip you to fulfill your destiny, walk in dominion, and live in the power of the Holy Spirit. Here's Pastor Moses. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight. If you're online, welcome. Welcome to the house of the Lord. This is Living Destiny Church, where your destiny comes alive. And we believe in that in this house, God is preparing us to do the work of ministry, and God has a plan for us. Amen. I had, I, had, I had somebody tell me, and I'm not going to mention their name, but I had somebody tell me that they have never been stretched this much in a church, <laughs> that they have been moved out of their comfort zone, even to go higher and higher, and that's what this house is for. Amen. It's for God to break you out of what you know and break you into what you don't know and even confirm the things that he has already told you so that he can bring about his glory in your life. Somebody say amen. Well, last, uh, last few weeks we've been dealing with the different kinds of covenant. And we've talked about the Edenic covenant, which is uh, be fruitful and multiply. You know, fill the earth and replenish it. That one is the original, is the original covenant. Amen. That covenant still holds. If man did not break any of the covenants, this is the one covenant that we will be operating by, right? So that is foundational. That has never changed. And by the redemption of Jesus Christ, we are back to that covenant again, that I will be fruitful. I will multiply. I will replenish the earth. I will fill it and I'll have dominion in the earth. Somebody say amen. And they went to the Adamic covenant where Man had now sinned, and God said, now that the seed of the woman shall crush the head of the serpent, and the, and, the, and the serpent shall bruise his heel. Minor damage versus a complete destruction of the words of the enemy. And that, and that covenant is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Then last week we talked about the Noahic covenant. Noah, Noahic covenant, and God gave us a rainbow as a sign that he will not destroy the earth anymore. Um, but I believe we read in... Uh, in Genesis chapter 6. So let's, let's begin there. Our next covenant to deal with will be the Abrahamic covenant. But before we get there, I believe God wants us to deal with something today. Amen. So Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. If you're online, please grab your Bible and be ready to follow what God is doing in the house. Amen. Genesis chapter 6. And this really is... is, is, is a reminder to us about the state of the earth and how God expects us to be different, how God expects us to stand out, how God expects us to do his work of ministry. Genesis 6 verse 1, the Bible says that now it came to pass, now it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. Verse 3, and the Lord said, my spirit shall, no, shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his day shall be a hundred and twenty years. Now for God to, I guess, practically give up on what he created, he said it was good. God looked at every creation. It was good. It was good. It was good. That he, he saved the best for last and made man not after any other fashion, but un, after his own image, like myself. And then many, many, many times later, he says, my spirit shall no longer strive with man. I, I am tired. I am tired of having to, co- I, I'm, mm, enough is enough. Jump all the way to verse number five. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. Those are some serious words. Wickedness, every intent of the thought of his heart, only evil continuously. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. The Bible says that grieve not the Holy Spirit. It seems like the, 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 the world has not changed. It's only gotten worse. And uh, tonight I want to remind you of something and then, and then we, shall, we shall enter into a time of prayer. God wants to use you in the earth. 
God wants to use you where? In the earth. God wants to do his work in your life in the earth. And God wants to use you as a light. I believe that, and, and, and I speak this very much as, as a follow-up to Sunday's message, um, that we want to be used by God, but God is having a hard time distinguishing us from the world. There is a very difficult, it's like God is like, where are we as a church? The church has become so much like the world. The church needs saving before the church can be used to do the saving. And so there, there, is, there is not much we can do about what other people do. But there is something you can do about your life and how then you can intercede and pray and ask God to move in the lives of other believers in the land. Amen. And so wickedness will abound. Like in the days of Noah, wickedness was abounding. Wickedness will abound. Um, but the reason for tonight, but the goal of tonight is for us to, to notice the wickedness of the earth and remember that we are called to be different. Right, I think, I think in us, you know, I think this scripture has been abused too long. Where it's like, you know, and Paul said that I became like them so that I can win some. Right, and so because Paul became like them, now we have become so much like them, no one can tell the difference. And it's very hard, if it's, 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 it, it's like nobody wants to be ridiculed anymore. Nobody wants to be called a Christian anymore. Nobody wants to stand out as a believer anymore. And so it's, I mean, I, I would say no one, but the numbers are getting less and less. Where the excitement that Bible said that they were, they were, they celebrated and they rejoiced because they were counted worthy to suffer for Christ's sake. That the love of God, like I will do this again and again and again and again. But we are looking too much to blend into the world. We are looking too much to fade into it. It's, it's, it's very much like we, we want to be undercover Christians and to, and to, and to win souls like that. You know, let's just, let's just infiltrate their camp quietly. Don't let them see you. you know, and by your good works and by how nice you are, how wonderful you are, they will ask you a question and say, who are you? You are different. And tell them, shh, don't tell nobody. I'm a Christian. Oh, you want to become a Christian too? Okay, now there are two of us. Like that, this undercover. But the gospel is offensive. Somebody say hallelujah. The gospel is offensive. And the gospel is distinct. That the ways of man are wicked. And we cannot just blend in. Because when that happens, we begin to take on the nature of and the characteristics of the world, and now we begin to defend it. Uh, it it's, it's unfortunate that the church nowadays ordains homosexuals. That is not the word of God. I, 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 you, you cannot convince me by any other spirit. It, 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 it is not the word of God. We love them, but the word of God is the word of God. If, if I'm doing something wrong, that doesn't mean that because you want to show love to me, you have to agree with what I'm doing in order to love me. Actually, by not telling me the truth of the word of God, you do not love me. If you truly love me, you will give me the word of God and let me go cry and let me go fight. Let me go argue with it until I am convicted in my spirit about what is right. But if I steal and you come and say, well... You know, I mean, I mean, the, 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 the earth is the lost and the fullness thereof anyways. So even though you took something that belongs to somebody, don't feel too bad because it all belongs to God anyways. Right? No, God knows that they are wicked. So you taking from them is God taking uh, from the, God, God transferring wealth from the hands of the wicked into the hands of the righteous. Listen, you can come up with crafty ways to defend what is wrong. And that in many ways has become the state of the church. We have found glorious ways like you will go to church and you cannot tell whether you are at a club or you are in church. When Christians or when people come to church and say that I couldn't tell where I was, whether I was in the club or I was in the church. We have lost that power. We have lost that identity. So tonight... I'm going to challenge you. 
to the state of the world according to the word of God. And the instruction for tonight is then, I need to check my flesh. I need to check in which ways that I have copied the world, I have blended in the world, in what ways have I let my flesh arise above the spirit of God, in what ways in my life have I catered to the flesh above the spirit of God to the point where I am becoming like the world, how we talk how we dress, what we listen to, where we go. We, have, we are so blended in right now. It's scary. Right? It's scary. So let's, let's get it right, okay? Uh, let's go to the book of Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. I'm asking you t- um, tonight that without waiting on your brother, without waiting on your sister, without waiting on the church, you make a decision tonight. You make a decision tonight that I will walk with God. You make a decision tonight that I will stand out. You make a decision tonight that if it comes to me, if in the whole world God is looking for one man who will stand in the gap, if God is looking for someone, he will find it in me. That I will not be so blended in that God cannot identify me. Luke 17, verse number 22. Luke 17, verse number 22. Then he said to the disciples, The days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, Look here, look there. Do not go after them or follow them. Now, this is, this is, this is really relevant in this time where people are coming up. You know, at first it was like a cult was so distinguished, we could say, eh, that's a cult. But now we are celebrating cults, right? Uh, people are doing their own thing, and we are worshiping man. Man is being worshipped. Man is being exalted above God. Somebody can do something that violates the word of God, and we will give a reason. No, 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 that man is a man of God. Well, if he's doing something wrong, he is wrong. But we will defend the person above the word of God. The Bible says that they will say, uh, here he is, look there, look there. So Jesus is here. People are now calling themselves God. And, and, and many people are flocking to them. That, that, the, that that's Jesus. But, but he says, no, do not fall for that. The fact that somebody does a miracle. Church, the realm of the spirit is the realm of the spirit. Miracles are not limited to the church. You do understand that. Miracles are not just limited to Christians. Moses put his staff down, became a serpent. Pharaoh says, watch this. Boom. And so, don't get tickled by miracles. Don't go, don't go chasing after signs. Oh my God, signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Listen, I believe in signs and wonders. I believe in God moving. But if my heart is not transformed by the word of God, signs and wonders become a temporary entertainment. And the world wants us to be focused on signs and wonders. Look there. Look at that man. Oh man, when he he swings his hands, people just fall. And so what? I believe in the power of God, but the power of God to save. The power of God to transform. The power of God to break the yokes of the enemy. The power of God to empower his people to live righteously. The power of God to break generational curses and cause your bloodline to, to flourish. That is the power of God. But power that is just for display. To the point where people are now faking science. Put, put, put their hands in a chemical. And then put it in water. And then shake, 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 shake. And it becomes red. It is the blood of Jesus. It's just science. It's now the compound is on their hands. When it dissolves, it turns red. You take a chemical, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to just, just, just touch it, and then it will light up, fire of the Holy Ghost, and the fig, and then poof, fire. And, 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 and the church is tickled by it. When Bible says that, discern, check every spirit, examine every spirit, because they are going to tell us, 
Look there. Look here. He's here. And if we fall for it, we will become like them. Look at verse number 24. For as the lightning that flashes out of one part of heaven shines to the other part, real fast, right? That's the dramatic presentation. So also shall the Son of Man be in his day. Verse 25. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, that's why I wanted us to read Genesis 6. Man was wicked. Man was evil. Bible is saying in the book of Luke, just it said in the book of Luke, right? As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. So what we saw in the days of Noah, that grieved the heart of God. The things we saw that God regretted that he had made man. Bible is saying that now it is happening. And so it is, it is not because of our technology and our advancement does not mean that the church is big. And now, yes, God is moving around the land and the nation, but I'm saying that wickedness is abounding. And I can say clearly that the love of the church is shrinking. The church in America is dying. Churches are closing faster than anything else. And they are being turned into clubs and mosques. Pastors, about, I, I think the service was like 60%, no, it was like 40% of pastors every day think about quitting. But we don't think on that. Right? It's just, oh, another church, another church. But, 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 but the church as a whole is not working in power because we have, we have sought to be like the world. That would not be our portion in the name of Jesus. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. This is the state of the world. Verse number 27. They ate. They drank. They married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Bible says, let me give you another example. Verse 28. Likewise, as it was in the days of Lot, Abraham and Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold. They planted, they built, but on that day when Lot out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so, it will be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. If you realize that in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, men were getting with men. The people came out and said, the men that have entered your house, bring them out so that we may have relations with them. And so what we are seeing here glorified on TV, what we are seeing here glorified in the world like human rights, human rights is actually something that happened in the day of Noah, happened in the day of Lot, and are happening right now. Let's not get deceived by human rights. Okay, it's your right. It is your right. I, I, think, I think one of the most difficult things to do in this country is to be a Christian president. Because as a president, you, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, Bound to operate by the U.S. Constitution. And your internal decisions are governed by the word of God. But here you are. are, they, are, are, are is everybody a citizen of the country? Yes? Is everybody a citizen of the country? Is everybody saved? No. Not everybody is saved. But is everybody a citizen of the country? Yes. So does everybody have a right in the country? <laughs> no matter how anointed you are, you cannot take away the right of an American. You hear what I'm saying? That's why we are governed by the word of God. And so guess what? Wickedness is abounding. We call it rights and we, and we, and we, and they, and, and they, it, I'm not really bothered about the rights. You, 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 I mean, maybe, maybe this is very personal. I am not bothered by the rights. You want insurance? Get insurance. You, you want to file joint? File joint. I don't, like, it doesn't change the fact that it is wicked. The church is afraid that if we give people their rights to get health insurance, then, oh my God, no, listen, they can get health insurance and still go to hell. Let's focus on that which is important. They are so, we are fighting the wrong battles in the wrong circles. The battle is that 
in the days of Noah, wickedness was abounding. With Lot, wickedness was abounding. Were abounding. In the days of Jesus, abounding. In the days of Paul, uh, Paul says that, and they replaced natural relations with unnatural ones. The Bible, the Bible has been talking about this for years. But the church wants, wants to be blended in. You cannot. We are not allowed. Let them call you names because you stood for the word of God. Let them despise you because you stood for the word of God. I would rather stand alone before God and say, Lord, I stood for your word um, than, than, than compromise what he has said in his word. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, verse number 3. See, our call is to love everyone, and we love everyone. But one thing... <laughs> What, what the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? In loving us, he died. In loving the world, you got to tell them the truth. Okay? Death was, death was the evidence of his love. And we want just kindness and sweetness and don't offend them. No. Tell them the truth. The wages of sin is what? Is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Our Lord, let this be the final determination of what happens in this life. We have to stand out because in the days of Noah, in the days of Lot, and today, men are wicked. Matthew chapter 24 verse 3. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us. When will these things be? And what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that what? No one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and deceive many. The same thing we read in the book of Luke. They will say, look there, look here. Jesus is here. The Messiah has come. He said it again. They will come and they say, there is the Christ. There is the Savior and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. That one has been going on for many years. Oh, I remember when many, many years, Second World War, oh my God, Jesus is coming. Right? And every war, every war is, is happening. But the signs of the end is coming. Amen? And see that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. So these are the beginnings. So we are praying, oh God, save the devil. Lord Jesus, save the devil. Oh Lord Jesus, no, you, you, you can't save the devil. Oh Lord, let all this war stop. It says all these things. What does the Bible say? See that you are not troubled. That, that is your role. For all these things must come to pass. Don't be afraid though. Because for to live is Christ. And to die is gain. So I ain't got nothing to lose. Like, listen, if he ends right now, good. If it doesn't end right now, I'm going to have some more fun, win some more souls, and then the end comes. Either way, I'm good. That is the disposition of the Christian. I am not afraid. But you know why many in the church will be afraid and must be afraid? Is that we have become so much like the world, we are not ready for the coming of Jesus. If he's to come today... Hold on, Jesus. Hold on. Let me put on my Christian clothes, Jesus. Hold on. Hold on. Too late. Like the flashing in the sky. It's done. In the twinkle of an eye. The church is afraid because we ain't ready. We know that we have been sleeping with the enemy. It's coming for the church without spot and blemish. I want, I want, I want to... Revive your commitment to your faith tonight. Your commitment to Jesus tonight. And let you understand that it will be in stark contrast to the world. It must be in stark contrast to the world. There must be a distinction for what, for what relationship has a light with darkness. Like they don't mix. This idea of mixing together. Is troubling the church and is weakening our power. It was actually in tribulation 
that many realized the conviction of the saints and said, I want that. That what is it that will make you willing to be crucified? What is it that will make you willing to be stoned? They tell you, denounce your faith. They said, I would rather die a thousand deaths than denounce. What is in, in that? Like, give us that. So blending in is not the answer. Blending in is not the answer. Church, blending in is not the answer. You must stand out. You are the light of the world. Bible says we are the salt of the world. If the salt loses its flavor, it will be trampled on the ground. And is that not what the world is doing to the church today? They deceived us to become part of them so that we can all kind of figure it out and come to a democratic understanding of what it means to sin and what it means to pray. And then after we lost our flavor, they're like, man, get out of here. You useless little thing. You don't even belong here anyways. The church is so disrespected. The name Christian has no power anymore. I'm saying that let that not be spoken of you. You will be the exception. I don't trust Christian, but, but my neighbor over there, though, man, I, I see she different, he different. Let us be different from the world. I wish all believers would hear this. I believe all, I, I, I pray all believers will, will, will arise to this truth so that the fire of God will go to the nations. Amen. Question number seven. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Is the what? Is the beginning of sorrow. Uh, look at, look, look at uh, verse nine. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. How will they identify you if you are part of the world? Right? He's saying that because you stand out, because you are distinguished, they will deliver you and, they, and you will be hated. Verse number 10. And then many will, and then many will be offended will betray one another and will hate one another. In the mixture of all this confusion, then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, like in the days of Noah, like in the days of Lot, like in the days of Jesus, like in the days of Paul, like in our day, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end. Somebody say hallelujah. So the nature of the world is wicked. Let's stop defending the wickedness of the world. It ain't that bad. No, it is. It is. It is that bad. It is that bad. It is. It is the the the, the murders and the and the and the killings and the and the racism and the and the unfairness and 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 oppression and and lying and stealing and cheating and 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 immorality it's 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 rampant it is it is it is indeed wrong it is indeed everywhere it is indeed unfortunately in the church I shake my head every single time I hear stories about what happens in the church. That the, the, the immorality and the disorder that is in the house of the Lord. We don't fear God. You see, maybe God, God should bring back the, 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 the days of thunder and lightning. Grand open, swallow you up, gone. Uh, what did he do? Oh, he ain't doing that. Right? Like a, like a little warning shot to, to let you know that this is what happens when you do that. But the mercy of God has been taken for granted. But I'm asking you tonight, and God is challenging us tonight. Let us be different. Let us be a different church. Let us be a different people. People that walk rightly before God. Uh, that stand upon his word. And that if I sin and I say, 
and God says, you have sinned. I say, Lord, forgive me. Like, we are quick to repent. We are quick to get back in line with God. We are, we, like, that is our goal, to be right with God instead of pleasing man. Whom shall we obey? I'd rather obey God than man. That must be our conviction. That must be something that we are not willing to edit because the church is in a dangerous place right now. I don't care how many, how many stadiums are filled for worship. Listen, the church is in a dangerous place right now. Sometimes I believe we, we only do that as a matter of warming ourselves. Oh, there's still some of us. Amen. But the power of conviction, the power of transformation, the power that breaks the flesh, the power that convicts you to say what you are doing is wrong. The power that pushes you to his presence to seek his face so you can stand out. You don't want that power. You want the firework. Oh, that was an awesome, awesome time. I'm not, I'm not against the worship. I'm saying that whilst we are doing that, Let's check ourselves. Whilst we, are, whilst we are declaring that he is good and he is mighty and he is great, search me, O God, and know my thoughts, I pray, and see if there be any wicked way in me. Like, we should not, we should not be comfortable or content with stepping out of the house when I know that I am not right with God. Instead of saying, hey, I got no, I, I deal with that later. Everybody is doing it anyway. No, that, that, that is too loose uh, between you and God. You, you can't change your neighbor, right? We can't change other people. That's why you are hearing the word today. I want you to make that decision yourself that I will not leave my house. I will not pretend I am okay when I know I am not okay with God. Because He searches the heart. Listen, you can come to church and yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, hallelujah, yes, Lord. Oh, thank you, Father. You can do all of that. If your heart is not changed, if your heart is not changed, with your lips, you praise me, but your heart. Let us not be like that. We will not be a people like that. We will not be a church like that. We will not be a congregation like that where we are, where, where we are impressed with the outward appearance. God looks at the heart. And so no one, I encourage you, do not come to the house of the Lord looking to pretend. I come here Listen, that's why I don't take worship off. I don't stay in the back, and then when worship is over, let's introduce Pastor Moses and I come. It's my moment. No! The same way you are worshiping and needing a touch from God, I am here, I'm here having my church with God. Where he's encouraging me, where he's rebuking me, where he's challenging me, I'm having an encounter with Jesus. So, just... Be at peace. Everybody here, everybody who comes to the house of the Lord needs a check-in. So stop pretending you got it together because we all know because you are coming to church, you ain't got it together. Hallelujah. And I always remind you, the moment you, you feel that you got it together, we're going to pray the angels to come take you away because now you're making all of us look bad. Your perfection is ruining our imperfect picture. And so you got to go so that we can know that Jesus is working on us. Don't pretend. Don't pretend. Come. Broken. Oh, Lord God, I am a sinner. Lord God, I have violated your word. Lord God, I need you. A broken and a contrite heart, he will not despise. Pretending you have it together is what has moved the church to where we are right now. Where there's no more godly sorrow. Where there's no more godly repentance. Where there's no more a heart that is seeking after God. Why should I repent if I am okay? So all you have to tell me is, it's not that bad. If it's not that bad, then I don't need to repent because it is not that bad. But we know that wickedness is abounding in the earth. 
Look at verse number 12. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will do what? Grow cold. Matthew 24, verse 12. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. So that means you began hot. You were on fire for God. Your heart burned for the things of God. When they mentioned Jesus, you're like, who, 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 my love, my God, my King. You're excited about God. But now, because wickedness is abounding, your temperature is coming low. We are becoming like the world. The hard question will be, if they put an unbeliever next to you right now, and they watch both of your lives, will there be a difference? Let me, let, me, let, let me take it to a more dangerous level. If they took an unbeliever and you, and put you together, and that unbeliever was a kind, sweet, caring, gentle person, would they tell the difference? Because if there's no difference of power and the hand of God and the conviction of God and His presence upon your life, then you are just a nice, cute, gentle, kind uh, unbeliever. You see, the church has lowered our, our level of power down to be nice. And so far as I am nice, then they will see my light shining and say, wow, why are you so kind? Listen, they are very even probably more kind unbelievers than they are believers. So kindness is not enough. Being generous with your money is not enough. The world gives more than the church. So let's not limit the power of our Christ and the power of the cross down to I am a nice person, so I am good. For your righteousness is as Filthy rags. There must be a distinction. God is calling us to have a distinction. Yes, it's uncomfortable when you stand out. Um, but because God's light is shining upon me, I'm excited. Stephen, standing out. Being stoned. Smile on his face. Like, here I come, Jesus. You can do this. Some of us, let, let, them, let them tell us that because you are Christian, I'm going to turn the AC up from 71, 72. Oh, no, no, no. Don't do that. It's going to be hot. It's too hot. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's stand out. Somebody say amen. So whilst there's wickedness in the earth, what must we do? First John. First John chapter 2. Ah, John, first John chapter 2. First John chapter 2, verse number 15. First John 2, 15. So how can we be distinguished? How do we stand out? And I know this message may not be popular, but that's what we need to hear. If we are going to be a powerful church and a powerful people, and even, even outside of church, if you are going to be a powerful person walking in his presence and walking in the fullness of God, this is what must happen. There must be a clear, a clear demarcation, a clear distinction from the world. First John 2 verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. Don't love money. Don't love money. Don't love money. Uh, the fact that money can buy you nice and wonderful things doesn't mean you love it. You serve God with money. You don't serve money. Right? And, 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 and many of us have forgotten just how it is to be content. How to be content with what you have. That you have shoes on your feet. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That I have a place to lay my head. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That, that, that uh, I, I, I was complaining about my shoes until I met the man who had no legs. 
Mm. Jesus. I was complaining about my legs. And I met a man who could not walk. Yes. We are loving. The thing is, if you love God, you will not love the world. So the love of the world, that, that pursuit, like we are more aggressive about making money than we are aggressive about knowing God and being his representative. Like everything is about the next race, the next money, the next promotion, the next job, the next this, the next opportunity, the next investment. We, like we are chasing God, we, 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 we are chasing the things of the world to get shiny, shiny things. To get shiny, shiny, because the, the world says that, you know, the finer your car, you know, the more, the more, the more bells and whistles are in your car. Even though you don't use them, the more of them you have, the better you are. We have all upgraded our phones to the, maybe to the newest or the past three years. Half of the phone you don't know how to use. All the benefits they sold you. That you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You still don't know how to find your name. <laughs> what, 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 what is this? There are simple things on your phone you still don't know how to do. But when the next one comes, you must get it because all your friends have it. The things of the world. Having the parties and the houses. Having the fame and the fine clothes. I like nice clothes. And in your heart, your heart cannot compromise God in pursuit of that comfort. Your heart cannot compromise God. Sometimes you have to turn down that third job. Sometimes you, you, you have to give up that extra $200 or that extra $1,000. So that you can spend time with God. For what does it profit a man when he gains the whole world and loses his soul? You have all the money in the earth. And when you die, someone's going to enjoy it. There was a man who said when he dies, he wants to be buried with all his money. He was a rich man. So, he said, promise me. That when I die, he told his children, promise me that when I die, you will bury with all my money. Oh, that as he promised. So the day that he died, the wife wrote a check. <laughs> and put the check in <laughs> with all his money <laughs> in the coffin. <laughs> Go cash it. <laughs> Your money doesn't go with you. It cannot go with you. So all that pursuit and all that longing, don't love the world or anything in the world. For anyone who loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The same way the flesh is at enmity with the spirit. The same way the love of the world is at enmity with the love of God. Remember, from the first month of covenant discussion I laid this foundation you cannot have a covenant with two enemies if they are not in agreement you can't have one as your friend and not the other because they don't like each other the father and the world are not together the spirit and the flesh are not together so you can't pursue any one of the world or the flesh it says don't love them for all that is in the world, the last of the flesh, right? The comfort. I want. I want more. I want more. I want more. My closet is overflowing, but I want more. Yes, I don't need it, but I want it. The last of the eyes. Listening, whatever is 
famous, whatever, whatever is applaud, whatever is nice, whatever, pursuing that. People are compromising the word of God because they don't want to lose crowd. They will not correct when evil is wrong or when things are done the wrong way because if I preach on this, half the church will leave. And I need people to see me as the one who can gather crowds. Let's ask them, how many of you are willing to eat of my body and drink my blood? They said, yeah, that's where we draw the line, bro. <laughs> and they left. Jesus was not in the business of gathering a crowd. The last of the eyes. Stop the pursuit of gathering things that moth can destroy, where thieves can steal. Stop gathering things that rust. Stop gathering things. Pursue the things of God. Pursue ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. I'm saying that you have to be radical about it. You have to be clearly distinguished by it. I'm, 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 what God doesn't want us to do is to say, well, you know, I'm a Christian. But you know, you know, you know, you got to do what you got to do. No, a clear distinction. I pursue God first. He's number one in my life. He's not only important in my life. He is number one and the only in my life. And the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. The world is passing away in the last of it. But he who does the will of the Lord abides forever. Real quickly, Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. This is, this is, in this house, we are not apologetic about that word of God, about the word of God, because we are raising what? Godly, global, kingdom minded leaders and disciples of Jesus Christ. One day, you may be called beyond Norfolk. You may be called to a different country, you may be called to a different state where you must go preach the gospel. If you are going to preach the gospel that is not true, please don't reference us. Don't tell them you are from us. No, we don't want that. Amen. Because in this house, we want to be about the word of God. I want to send you out where, where, where you are clearly radical, where you are clearly insane, where you have clearly lost your mind for Jesus and you are ready to lay your life down for the sake of the gospel. I will preach the truth no matter what it cost me because it is the truth and the truth is the truth and so the truth is what I speak at all times. It is always right to do the right thing. It is always right to speak the truth. Don't compromise the word of God with the hope that you will gather more people and then you will eventually convince them to do right. Whatever you win them with, you have to keep them with. You understand that? If you want them with lies, you got to keep them with lies. That, that is why in this house, we pray. If you stay, you would have seen prayer so much. If you don't want to pray, you won't survive. It's on purpose. We are training people who love to pray who are willing to grow in prayer and in the word of God and in the power of his spirit. And if you don't want to do that, you're going to be like, mm, mm, that's too much. That's okay. So we are going to be a people that stand out. Somebody say amen. Ephesians 5.14. Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 14. Let us go beyond being nice people. Let's be powerful people, full of light. Amen. 5.14. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even you shall love, oh no, in the wrong place. I'm in Galatians, Ephesians 5, verse 14. Ah, therefore he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, you walk rightly, you walk properly, not as fools, but as wise. Doing what? 
redeeming the times, and here we hear again, for the days are evil. We don't want to admit that the days are evil because if we do, then we got to work. And so it's not that it's, it's, it's fine. Everything is fine. It's just, it's just people being people. No, the world is wicked. The world is getting wickeder and wickedest. You know what I'm saying? It's getting more wickeder and more wickeder. You know what I'm saying? It is getting worse and worse. And worse. So that is a call for the sleeper to awake. Prayer warrior, awake. Intercessor, awake. Evangelist, awake. Man of God, awake. Woman of God, awake. Prophet, awake. Because the world is getting darker and darker. And if we are going to draw them, let the sound of God be made. It is getting dark out there and your light is needed to shine. So make sure there's oil in your lamp. So that you will go to the end. Hallelujah. Redeem the time, for the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, lack of control, things breaking down. But be filled, what? With the Spirit. He's saying, be drunk with the Spirit. May it be known by all those around you. That this, this guy is, <laughs> is, is drunk by the Spirit of God. Don't be known by the drunkenness of natural things. Easily angered. Revengeful. Bitter. Unforgiving. drunk with the spirit but how can you be filled with the spirit of God See, th 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 uh, this is the analogy that God is giving it says do not be drunk with wine in which there is dissipation but be filled with the spirit he's giving an analogy how does a drunkard get drunk help me he drinks you drink to no end until there is dissipation until you've lost all control one does not do it. You got to keep, keep it up and don't stop. And eventually it will compound into loss of control. And then we'll call you drunk. Same with the Spirit of God. Don't come to church one time and expect to be filled with the Holy Spirit and, and, and be drunk with the Spirit. No, you got to go home and drink from the Spirit continually until you are drunk. But we are not doing the drinking from his spirit, we are not drinking from his well, from his word, from his presence. And so we go out and we say the spirit of God is in us. And that is true because you have drunk something. But you are not to the place where you are under the influence. Are you living under the influence? Drinking here and there once in a while, you know, a, a nice, a nice... Um, uh, sermon on YouTube, Sunday church. Okay, that's, that's not enough to be drunk. To be drunk, study to show yourself approved. It's a daily, this book of the law, you shall meditate day and night, day and night. That's how you get drunk. Right? You want to get drunk? Day and night, day and night, day and night, continually drinking from his well. I've never been drunk, so I don't know. Like with wine drunk with wine but I'm going to make an example here if it is correct if, it, if, if it's not correct come back and correct me but I can assume that when someone first starts to be drunk one bottle and they were like oh they've lost it the next time the one bottle may rock them a little bit so now they need like one and a half to really like really get there and then after their body has mastered one and a half, now that is no longer enough to tip them over. So now they must do two. Because capacity is increasing. And so can I say that what you used to drink of the spirit, one fast a month, that you were like, whoo, I'm excited. After a while, that is no longer enough. 
because the world is getting more wicked and you have gotten used to this. So now you need to go to two. And once your life gets used to two, you, you want to be drunk, then three. If the Holy Spirit is, is becoming familiar and normal to you, then four. I'm getting too normal. Five. Drinking. From his presence. Otherwise, we'll have a form of godliness. We'll have empty bottles around our house. Empty bottles of the spirit of God around our house. From ten years ago. And that's what we tell people. Man, ten years ago, I used to have been drunk. But now, all the spirit and the power has left your body. It was not replenished. So you are no longer drunk. And your testimonies are from ancient of days. Last scripture. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. Galatians 5 16. And I say then. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. And you will not fulfill the last of the flesh. Can we, can we, before we even finish that, okay, let me, let me, let me read through it. Galatians 5, 16. I say, then walk in the spirit. And you shall not fulfill the last of the flesh. For the flesh last against the spirit. They don't work together. And the spirit against the flesh. The flesh don't like the spirit. Spirit don't like the flesh. God don't like the world. The world don't like God. And these are contrary one to another. So that you do not do the things you wish. You are torn between the two of them. You just stay in the middle. But if you are led by the spirit of God. You are not under the law. Then the works of the flesh are what? Evident. Which are adultery. It is wrong. Someone say it is wrong. 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 Doesn't matter if they call themselves a prophet, a chief apostle, a supernatural pastor. It doesn't matter what title they have on them. Adultery is adultery and it is wrong. Sorcery. Wrong. Witchcraft stuff. Wrong. Hatred. I hate. It is wrong. Contentions. Jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfishness, ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness of wine, reveries, and the like. Come on, say, and the like. And the like. Come on, say, bully, and the like. Aha, uh -huh. he's saying that all the things that are of the flesh. Don't tell me that, oh, none of it is here, so I'm good. There are some things that are working in your life that are not in, in, in this verse. That you still need to check. Of which I tell you beforehand, just like I told you in the time past, that those who practice these things would not inherit the kingdom of God. Someone say, walk in the spirit. Uh, please stand up on your feet. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining us. 2023 is Living Destiny's Year of Covenant, where we seek to better our understanding of our agreement with God and the commitment he's made to us. We hope that you were blessed by today's service and that your life will never be the same. May God bless you, and we'll see you next week.